This is going to be something very similar to like we did in the past. Actually, we did an official reading for uh, the Mystic Rectangle. And uh, it was meant to be like an information type of spread. We did an unofficial reading for the Mystic Triangle and another one for Wings of a Bird or Wings of a Hawk in the Taurus New Moon. And we're going to be doing the same thing for the wings of a hawk in the Gemini full moon. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this, this reading is unplanned. It's kind of a random reading, so it's going to go into the random section, I guess, on our channel. All right, and it's going to be very simple. It's going to be some, like a simple reading that we did for uh, the Taurus new moon energies, the wings of a hawk. We're going to have two energies that represent the wings and one energy that represents that's going to give us an idea on how to uh, balance these two energies of the wings make them work all right energize them all right so uh, so for the First energy here and, and energy here. We're gonna get spirit's help. Thank you, spirit. To get some information on the wings of a hawk, the Gemini new moon. It's coming out. Whoa. That's pretty yeah, okay. Thank you, spirit. That flip. Sometimes it's so fast that I want to get it, but it just kind of just disappears. All right. All right. Thank you, Spirit. Now the wings of a hawk in the Gemini New Moon is slightly different than the one in the Taurus New Moon because uh, this one in the spot of Mars. It's Venus and the moon. All right, so so that's the two energies. And actually, we'll... Uh, look at the hand of fate to choose... Choose the one. This is the hand of fate. This one is going to be choosing the card that's going to help balance these two energies to give us some information, some insight from spirit. This one. All right, thank you, spirit. So I saw this one when it popped up. I didn't see this one, and I didn't see this one. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's go with this. It's the raccoon. Earth energy. You know. That's uh. That's not surprising because. Uh, uh, Heart of the Moon suggested on our Facebook page to uh, and gave some suggestions on how to understand the wings of a hawk aspect in the Taurus New Moon and uh, if you did that <clears throat> then you're going to be well on your way to understanding the aspect in the Gemini New Moon and in the spot of Mars, Venus and the Moon. And with Venus and the Moon there, we meditated on that energy. 
and uh, it's very similar to uh, this raccoon type of energy okay Venus with the energy of cancer cancer is uh, Canis Minor and Canis Major. Those are the two first and second decantes of Cancer. Canis Minor, that energy is about soaking in information and then making making that step, making, making that one bold step out of the cancers of the crab's home. Okay, but uh, it could take some discipline and some patience to soak in that information because the cancer's, the crab's ruler is the moon. And the moon is about soaking in information, but it's also about revealing ourselves as well. When do we, uh, when do we strike a balance between soaking in information and then making that bold step out? And if you take a look at the shape of Canis Minor, there's a fixed type of point, and then there's a, there's a step outwards. Okay, and that's the crab's energy. All right. So that being said, with uh, Venus and the Moon. Actually, the crab's ruler is actually in the, will be in the sign that will actualize this bird's wings of a bird. It's going to be about exactly that. When do we step out? When do we hide? When do we hide in the shadows and soak in information like this raccoon? And when do we come out? right here and uh, with Venus there it's like when do we when do we show our feelings when do we express this love this love can love can have any types of form so take take it as it resonates could be uh, romantic could be could be anything there's all these different types of love but it's making that step outwards as an expression of love with Venus there with Mars there it was something totally different it was it was mainly about uh, showing showing up to the table like in the five of, uh, could have been in the five of wands type of energy. Okay? When do we express action? Because uh, Venus and the moon is going to be in a square with Chiron. And they're going to be forced to work with each other. Chiron is about how do we heal uh, these old wounds, about how to express ourselves in a productive way. So Chiron and we believe, after doing some meditation, Chiron and the moon and Venus are going to work together to how to, to show an expression of love and take that however it resonates with you that expressions of love could be totally different for other people but if you take a look look at this card spirit picked a really beautiful card thank you spirit and when we meditated on it this is what we is a very similar energy than when we what we thought or what came to our awareness when is a good time to express and come out and express our love, 
have an expression of love. All right, now this is uh, in the spot where Saturn could be, okay? But uh, here, uh, in one wing, I'm basically, uh, in one wing is uh, is Chiron and Uranus and Venus and the moon, and basically in one wing. So this is the combination of all the energies, okay? Which is uh, Venus, the moon, Uranus, and Chiron, okay? So it, I'm thinking of it, thinking this wing is all those four energies in one wing, and same with this wing. So this is uh, it's going to be uh, Saturn, Chiron, and Uranus. Okay, and, and uh, Chiron, <clears throat> well, Saturn is in Aquarius. Saturn is going to be busy with bringing balance, bringing back the Aquarians, the wild Aquarians, back down to uh, reality. Because uh, in the nature of, with the nature of air, just the way it is, air can get their head in the clouds, literally. And uh, and that's where uh, the grounding type of energy of, it's like uh, Saturn, it's like this strict parent comes home and uh, literally, literally grounds uh, the wild Aquarians. And that's Saturn's type of energy. Saturn brings in this training and discipline type of energy and grounds the air, brings them back down to reality. But Saturn see Saturn is holding on basically to the reins of Uranus because Uranus is in its fall in Taurus. So Uranus is kind of limited in his power in Taurus already. And then you have Saturn holding the reins of Uranus almost. Uh, and timing. Saturn is going to help. Uh, Chiron be disciplined in the mind. And Chiron is going to, you know, Chiron is going to help Saturn to uh, express it. Like, uh, open up more. Like, uh, loosen the reins type of thing. Like, uh, it's going to, Chiron is going to help energize Saturn to uh, let go in the right moment. Okay, so Saturn, Saturn, uh, because uh, Uranus wants to go all in for a revolution. But Saturn is there kind of holding the reins on Uranus. But Saturn is going to go into retrograde and when he does guess what he's going to let go he's going to let go of the reins of uranus and something's going to actualize that's what i that's what i feel and uh uranus is going to uh revolutionize something his energy is going to be released into the energies of society so with Saturn here it's all about holding the reins and uh, letting go at the right moment and uh, with the spiritual universe they don't waste energy so they're gonna they're going to uh, hold on to the reins at right at the last moment for its full effect 
So uh, this is very close to uh, the energy of Saturn, Chiron, and Uranus right here. Because uh, it's kind of funny. Saturn and Uranus are really at odds uh, on when a revolution should happen. But the, but Saturn is going to say, well, when the time is right, right at the right moment, that's when I'm going to be releasing my control on this type of process right here. And it's going to be really an interesting energy because uh, how do we strike a balance between this earth energy and this air energy? Because uh, Saturn, yeah, if we get into an energy of Saturn too much, uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to feel like we're we're a little bit tunnel visioned, or uh, you know, tied up, and that could get us into a routine. could get it get us into a routine of uh just staying grounded okay so saturn's energy has a tendency to do that but uh it, look with this eagle energy this is uh, a transformation it's like a spiritual transformation and the eagle has a the eagle symbolizes in airy season the eagle symbolizes uh, wisdom all wisdom what Odin is to the tree of life the hawk is to the eagle so the tree of life symbolizes wisdom of the inner and outer worlds and the eagle symbolizes wisdom as well. Everything, the inside and outside. Okay? So this wisdom, this type of wisdom is going to be released. It's going to be tapping into, uh, tapping into some divine wisdom, like the tree of life. Okay, wow. It's all about, this is like uh, Saturn is going to be releasing this energy at the right moment. And uh, that's going to be, that's going to get and coax the crab, or this raccoon, out of its home at the right moment. Beautiful. All right, what's what did the hand of fate pick? Water energy. Well, yeah, and this is about mastering ourselves. And the hand of fate really picked a very similar card in uh, to try and understand the Taurus new moon, wings of a bird. The hand of fate picked a very similar card of mastering ourselves, and. Uh, Octopus is definitely energy about mastering ourselves and being flexible. This is a water type of energy. And uh, that could be an influence from cancer. Cancer's energy. With, uh, yeah, definitely with Venus and Moon. And the Moon being in cancer. It's going to bring in this water energy. In the middle 
to help heal things. So water could be uh, a lubricant to uh, change, you know. What's, uh, what's always a symbolism of water down in the Nile in Egypt? Water is always a symbol of change, change of the seasons, right? But that, but also the this card of uh, self-mastery, intellect, exactly. The Saturn's energy, Saturn's energy is going to help Chiron because uh, Saturn is going to be sextile with Chiron. Chiron is going to help loosen up Saturn on how to express himself, help him loosen the reins a bit, and Saturn is going to help Chiron to energize the mind. It's going to help balance the mind and strengthen the mind. With him, with Saturn being in Aquarius, Beautiful. And uh, that Saturn's energy going into here with strengthening the mind, mastering ourselves, discipline, training. And here's uh, the water energy from Venus and the moon coming over to, to here as well. And with Uranus, Uranus is a lot, of, a lot about originality. Flexible. Beautiful. So that's basically uh, the intent was to get some information and to help focus our energies on how to balance the wings of a hawk. And uh, the wings of a hawk, just take it as it sounds. It's uh, using our intuition and communicating. And uh, it's an invitation from spirit to, for higher learning. Because uh, the wings communicate with each other between a quincunx and a semi-sextile, okay? So it's really, we're really using our intuition, air energy to balance the wings of a hawk energy. And a lot of that has to do with mastering ourselves. So mastering ourselves means taking the initiative of uh, higher learning. So there's a chance for higher learning. That's an invitation from spirit. All right, thank you, Spirit. All right, so let's, uh, let's just go briefly to so Earth. There's the raccoon. So what does the, what does the Animal Spirit Guidebook says about the raccoon? Talented, shadowy, and hiding. Raccoon energy is at play within all artists. To greater or lesser degrees, at best, it indicates talent, tenacity, and skillfulness with a particular musical instrument or creative tool. Its shadow side points to an unresolved issue around self-image and success. Sometimes using a stage name or wearing a mask works as an artist's favor. Other times it limits creativity. Am I who my audience thinks I am? What if I am ready to grow into something more? Yeah, exactly. And that's what the, those are the types of feelings Venus and the moon will energize into this aspect because of the nature of the crab's energy, like Canis Minor. You know, when, when to, uh, 
yeah, there's a time to collect information, but that could uh, get get us into a routine of just collecting information. But then there's the energy of stepping out. That's the energy of Canis Minor. And that could make us more aware of our image. Am I who my audience thinks I am? What if I am ready to grow into something more? Raccoon energy won't let us off the hook until this creative ego fear is resolved. Exactly, and that's what uh, that's what Chiron is going to help to do is when to express yourself productively. Okay? And Iran is going to push this process with originality. When in balance, generous friend, exceptional artist, when out of balance, Competitive, starving artist to bring into balance, make new work. To bring into balance, make new work. That's stepping out. That's stepping out, making new work. An expression, something very similar to Candice Minor energy. All right, so where's the octopus? What does the octopus have to say? Reaching yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. The octopus signifies a wonderfully perceptive mind paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself into other people's business and shares their own without constraint. They believe that's what it means to be close. If you notice after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be a very old habit to change. When in balance, interested, enjoyed, intelligent. When in balance, needy, clingy takes, uh, lacks courage to bring into balance space to oneself, talk therapy. But, uh, yeah, this, this card was, uh, this card is in balance. I mean, that's the, that's the energy I'm reading uh, in the card. Now, yeah, I guess it all depends. Uh, it has some interesting, the book brings up some interesting energies if this octopus is out of balance but uh it's in the spot where it's in balance because this is the energy that helps balances these two energies so we're looking at the a very well balanced octopus and we know we know a lot more about octopuses than we did before they're fairly intelligent. Very intelligent. And their flexibility. So just take a look at the energy in the card. That's that's what I'm reading and that's what I'm looking at. When when this card pops up, I'm really looking at the energy of this card. And yeah, the, the book is right. It all depends on what the question it is and what spot this card is in. It really depends on cards, really, beside cards really help to define other cards as well. But mainly, I'm looking at the energy on the card, and it's telling me that, you know, like what I just said, like what I said previously. All right. Eagle. Eagle. Eagle, eagle.
all-pervading power, truth seeker, transforms karma. The noble ego emanates the light of the sun. This great bird is both physically and spiritually strong and represents mastery over the elements of fire and air. When the eagle appears, you'll soon be thrown into the karmic fire for the sake of your transformation. The eagle pushes us to be our best and brightest selves and stops at nothing to see us shine. Grasp the sun in your talons and hold on for the ride. You are stronger than you think, eagle child. When in balance, bright, radiant challenges. When out of balance, controlling. Exactly, controlling. When out of balance, controlling. Uh, to bring into balance, step into the unknown. So again, this uh, this card is in balance. And exactly, it's like what I was saying. When out of balance, controlling. <laughs> that Saturn right there. <laughs> and uh, just take a look at that card, though. If uh, the eagle is uh, let go, is not even touching the sun. I guess like, that could be the sun. It could be anything, really. But uh, it could be the sun. But if the... It looks like the eagle has just let go of the sun and dropped it somewhere. But you can imagine if the eagle was hanging on to the sun, it would be like uh, Saturn's type of energy. So, uh, exactly. That's uh, Chiron's energy is going to help loosen up the control from Saturn. And Saturn is going to help Chiron have a well-balanced mind and a strong mind. Grounded mind. And that could be an issue. That could be an issue in Aries, you know. Chiron is about healing our past wounds. And in Aries, it's about when do we express ourselves and, you know, when we, when we uh, you know, clam up. You know, that's the opposite of Aries, right? The, an out-of-balance ram is just being kind of clammed up almost, you know, almost like the cancer type of energy, you know not being able to do anything because we may have a wound around expressing ourselves so it's going to be could force us to be passive overly passive or could go the opposite could make our energy go out of balance like uh, our masculine energy is where the masculine energy is damaged is uh, there's a, an unbalance of masculine energy where we where it's you know it's very uh, aggressive and uh, unproductive you know releasing our anger well there's releasing anger in the healing process but there's got to be a middle ground expressing our anger and a default way of expressing our anger Where it becomes uh, where it becomes an issue in our lives, right? So uh, basically, extremes. Overly aggressive is is the extreme of overly passive, right? And uh, that's the two wounds that are in Aries. That's what uh, Chiron is there to try and uh, heal, right? So we need to f try to find a middle ground between passive and overly aggressive to being unproductive right you need to find a middle ground and that's why uh, that's what uh, Chiron is there so Chiron is going to help find a middle ground between no control and control for Saturn right less control when do we, uh, you know, what's the timing? When the timing is right to let go of the control. Saturn is going to help balance and strengthen the mind for the collective. Okay? All right. Thank you, Spirit. And again, Venus... And the moon, 
Actually, it's a really beautiful combination with the Venus and Moon being in Cancer because the Moon is going to, yeah, it's going to uh, help the crab collect information, but then Venus is there on when to express ourselves, right? And Chiron is going to help with that process as well. And Uranus is going to help Venus and the Moon find some kind of original way of doing that. Uranus but Saturn Uranus is going to uh, Uranus's energy is going to be let out into uh, society overall so uh, it could uh, bring this spirit of change or revolution in society to change on the inside okay so we're originally here and a re revolution on this side right All right All right one last card at least when we meditated on these energies at least that's that's what we came up with so you could uh, have, it's possible that you came up with the same or something more or something different or a combination of both. But uh, like I said, this is an information spread. So just to give you a heads up on what we came up with, give you to help you. Focus your mind. All right. All right. Thank you, Spirit. This is one last card as an overall feeling. And uh, Spirit picked the Bluebird. Wow, yeah. Really expressive. Number three, too, has a. It's. Uh, take a look at that energy. It's beautiful. It is. And it's like uh, when do we come out and express ourselves? Going into, fly into the energy very similar to like the Canis Minor. Make that bull move outwards, right? And uh, this card is vibrating at the energy of three. Creativity. Beautiful. And exactly. That was the that was the question about the, the raccoon. When do we, when can we tap into uh, that creative potential, right? And let it out. Same with here. There's color on the octopus. How can we uh, tap into uh, that originality of Uranus? How can we balance the mind with from Saturn's help? And how can we tap into Uranus's energy of originality? And then put that energy into this energy. And, and this one right here at the same time, right? This is the bluebird. Look at that. This is really beautiful. Very colorful. Like your spirit. Yeah, it looks like uh, this individual is out in nature and uh, there's a lot of color and expression all around her. All right, let's see. This is number three. All right. I am Bluebird, the freedom of inner peace. I am the joy of letting go. I am the serenity of acceptance. I am the flight of of the heart when all is at ease. Life is tranquil now or is bringing in calmer tides. Take a breath, enjoy the free air. You have earned the comfort of a sweet, well-timed repose. I am the transition into a better world. I am the gratitude of knowing the worst is over. 
I am life at its finest. We all need to confront the darkness in order to truly see the light. I am your passage of enlightenment and the break from all entanglements. There will always be discomforts and the heavy weight of time, but I am the gift of release and the playfulness of youth. There is something magical in freeing the soul. There is something dignified in spreading your wings. Beautiful. Yeah. In spreading our wings. Beautiful. Thank you, spirit. You are the resurgence of vitality. You are whimsical. You are carefree. You are bluebird. Beautiful. And uh, let's leave it at that. This is uh, the energy, the bluebird energy to energize this reading and help us to understand the spirit and energy of the wings of a bird in the Gemini new moon. Thank you, spirit. Take care.